Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. Uh, today we have a cool, cool little comparison video here for you. And that is on Vietnam era pattern uniforms. So I have two shirts here for you. This one right here is a first pattern um, Vietnam era uniform. Uh, this would have been used kind of towards the end of Korea too. This would have come out in like the 50s, uh, which is actually when uh, the U.S. started sending troops to Vietnam was in 1955, so this would have been the standard uniform. And then this is a very late uh, third pattern made shirt, uh, original, given to me by Mike B for a Christmas present, um, which I'm super thankful for because it's in my size. Uh, we'll get over some of the similarities here before we uh, go into a lot of the differences. Now, these shirts technically on paper are the same color you can clearly see that they are not the same color in the video. This one's actually kind of a more true green, whereas this is kind of more an olive drab. Uh, technically, they are both on paper label, labeled um, olive green number 107. Um, they both have chest pockets. They both have button closures. They're both a uh, cotton material, so, and... They're, that's about where the similarities end. So uh, this shirt right here was actually made in 1956. Uh, this shirt here was made in 1970. So this uh, shirt here, we'll get into the, the features of this shirt first. Uh, they both have the, the same collar, okay? Uh, it's kind of a, a lay down style collar. Uh, they, they're both got uh, points to put your uh, ranks and stuff on. Uh, the tag on this one is pretty beat up. Um, so I'll show you there. Uh, fuck. Right, so there is the tag. You can see it's beat up. It's the medium there. It has the NSN. Um, two chest pockets on this shirt, as you can see here. Two chest pockets, uh, non-bellowed, uh, exposed buttons, only one button closure. So very squared off. Uh, something very representa uh, representative of the Korean War. Now, one feature I really don't like about this shirt is the cuffs are not adjustable. Uh, they're just always this kind of looseness, which for me, if you see I'm kind of a skinny person, uh, they're hugely baggy. Um, I suppose you could get it tailored. A lot of people did at this time. Get their uniforms tailored to fit a little better. But this is actually a huge baggy shirt on me, despite the fact that it's a medium, which is the size that I would have worn. Uh, it's not a ripstop material if I give the camera a close-up there you can see it's not ripstop it's just kind of like your standard weave it's not a twill either it's just your standard weave um has og uh 107 color thread and it has nothing on the inside uh both of these shirts are unlined so uh you can see right here og 107 there's the the tag on the uh, inside beneath the, this would be the front of the shirt, on the uh, female side of the shirt, not the male side, so this is the side with the buttonholes, not the buttons, there is the tag there. So it, it says, um, shirt, uh, man's, cotton, OG 107, type 1, class 1. That's what that tag says. And this, uh, you could see these used throughout the Vietnam War. This is a, a much heavier shirt. It's not as durable as the rip stuff. And uh, it did not dry anywhere near as quickly as the ripstop, which was kind of a, a major issue with them in Vietnam. Uh, they didn't breathe as well, and they didn't dry as fast. So they, all, they also weren't as durable. So uh, we'll get into the third pattern of Vietnam Air Shirt. Now, this is a shirt that would serve through the end of Vietnam. Um, came out kind of in the late 60s. Uh, would serve through the Vietnam War and basically well into where Woodland uh, took over. This was kind of the standard uniform for the Army and the Marine Corps until, uh, as far as cut goes, uh, until uh, M81 Woodland came out. So basically until 1981 and probably a little while thereafter because there's that transitional period for everything. Uh, this shirt is cut way baggier. It is much larger uh, than than the uh, Type 1 shirt. This is uh, this Type 3 shirt, this third pattern shirt, is much larger uh, a few cool features they added is um, 
two positions on the cuff, all right? So you can have the cuff set for, for no position at all. So you could have it not buttoned, very big. Um, you could have first button or second button. So it's got, it's got adjustabilities in it, which is good. Uh, it creeps cr critters out of your uniform. It allows you to retain heat a little bit better. It allows it to, to, to fit on your, your arm a little bit better instead of just having this big, loose, you know, wizard sleeve-esque type thing that most military uniforms have that would just be getting caught on branches and everything like that. Um, collar is the same. Uh, the buttons did change. They're kind of the standard buttons that you still see on U.S. uniforms today, whereas the uh, early war shirt has a little different buttons that has a bevel kind of on the end. Uh, whereas these ones do not. They're more smooth. They're both plastic. So uh, here is the tag for this shirt as far as the size and stuff goes. The type the type 3 shirt there. So uh, the fabric on this one, as you can see, is ripstop. You can see all those little grid lines in it. Uh, it is 100% cotton still. So um, it feels a, a lot stiffer, this fabric does. And also... Um, if I rub the shirt together, it makes a lot more noise than this shirt, just because this shirt seems a lot more supple and kind of flowy, whereas this is a little bit more rigid. Uh, the fabric on this one is not as thick. It's much more durable. It breathes a lot better. It dries a lot quicker. Um, contrary to popular belief, Ripstop is good at stopping tears that run in one direction. So if you get a tear that isn't just like a slice, it is terrible because it'll just keep tearing that that length so of the direction that it's going it doesn't actually really stop tears unfortunately it's called rip stop but it it's kind of weird in the fact that it doesn't actually really stop rips or tears um it kind of slows them down from expanding but it it doesn't it doesn't stop them it's not a super durable fabric um uh we now have Two chest pockets, okay, up here still, uh, angled, uh, much more rounded in design than the Type 1 shirt. Um, flaps, uh, non-exposed buttons on this shirt. The shirt, uh, the Type 1 shirt had exposed buttons, this is non-exposed buttons. Two button closure for the pockets, and the pockets are bellowed. So you can see this little extra bit of fabric in here. When the pocket's empty, it'll lay flat like that. When you have stuff in it, it's bellowed, which gives you much more capacity and allows them to expand to hold more. It's about a half bellow, so the outside of the pocket isn't bellowed, but the inside part is. And then you also have two pockets that are down near the waist, uh, also with two button closure and non-exposed buttons. It has buttons down the front. The buttons are also non-exposed, uh, which is good because then they just don't catch on anything. It doesn't really have much of a purpose, you could see. Uh, the inside here. Now here is the inside tag. Now the inside tag on this shirt has been moved to the male end from the female end and it just says coat man's cotton uh, ripstop poplin OG 107 class 1 100 percent cotton. So there you go. There's the tag for that. And then it has a care label uh, you know and instructions for for caring for the the fabric. Unlike the Type 1. The Type 1 did not have a care label in it. So, so this is about 15 years of uniform development and soldier feedback and testing. They went through three patterns of, of jungle fatigue like this. So, and this went on to very heavily influence the, the battle dress uniform. So I thought you guys might want to see the, the kind of from the start of the war to the, the end of the war, the Vietnam War. Uh, as far as their uh, ideas for uniforms went. And uh, I can't thank Mike B enough for sending me this. These shirts are not cheap, uh, especially in original condition. So um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, you saw something you hopefully haven't seen yet here today. Please leave a like and subscribe if you feel like I'm worth it. Uh, donation goes a long way for the channel, and it means a lot to me. There's two ways you can support the channel in the About page. So, of my uh, channel tabs. So, thank you so much for watching, you guys, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.